सदाशिव समारंभाचार्य ओम सहनावतु सहनावतु सहवीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विना वधीतमस्त महाविद्विशावहै ओम शांतिशांतिशांतिशांति सो वी हैड कंप्लीटेड द सेवेंथ मंत्रा ऑफ द सेकंड सेक्शन लेट्स लुक एट द थर्ड मंत्रा नाउ we will chant together mano maya prana sharira neta mano maya prana sharira neta pratishthito ne hrdayam sannidhaya pratishthito ne hrdayam sannidhaya tad vignyane na paripashyanti dhira ha आनंद रूपम अमृतम यद्विभाति आनंद रूपम अमृतम यद्विभाति ओके सो दिस सेक्शन बेसिकली is uh, aimed at people who are in the karma kanda stage and uh, have dvaita bhakti so they have an ishwara who is different from themselves and they do puja and all that so this section aims to replace that dvaita bhakti with the view of advaitam advaita darshanam is the aim of the section it converts the karyam the product into the karanam and the upanishad is saying here that you who you thought was a sadaka worshiping uh, ishvara and in in upasana you know in upasana we basically visualize that ishvara as installed in our own body so there is a particular type of upasana called aham graha upasana So normally, when you invoke the Lord, you can invoke on Shiva Langam. You know, you can invoke on a on a statue. You can invoke anywhere. You can invoke on the fire in the home. But there is a particular type of upasana where you invoke the deity onto yourself. So remember, this is not gyanam. Okay, you still upasana only. So there is visualization. You are imagining that that Ishvara has been invoked in your own body, installed in your own body. and therefore some different names are being given so he says manomaya prana sharira neta there's two different names for ishvara manomaya because this ishvara can be recognized where in the thought only every thought every vritti is the reflecting medium where you can recognize what the reflected consciousness and what is the way to recognize the original consciousness the atma you have to look at chidhavasa only chit cannot be recognized because you are the chit and therefore for any recognition you have to look at the reflection just like you can see only the reflected eyes in the mirror you cannot see your own eyes and therefore if you want to recognize this chit the rc the reflected consciousness in the aram which is the thought that is the only way and therefore manomaya can be recognized in every manovritti that is ishvara then the second name is prana sharira neta so neta neta is the leader and the leader leads people and where does he take this person to what is this prana shariram leading the prana shariram so prana shariram is one word okay don't think of it as prana as one and shariram as another so leading this prana shariram the prana shariram should be taken as the subtle body the sukshma shariram because prana is one component of the subtle body pranamaya kosha is one of the three components and therefore here 
prana sharīram means sukshma sharīram. So this neta, the atma is the one, is the neta which leads this prana sharīram, which takes the prana sharīram, which takes the subtle body, right? And where does, now if you look at the totality of the teaching, where does this atma take the subtle body? When you are saying take, you are talking about travel, right? So you are talking about the travel of the subtle body. And the travel is possibly only because of the con possible only because of the consciousness principle, because of which subtle body, which is otherwise inert, gets as if life. It is blessed by consciousness, therefore it is alive. And that alive, live subtle body is being taken by the Atma from where to where? From one sthula shariram to another sthula shariram. From one physical body, the travel of the sukshma shariram, remember, is between bodies only, right? And the travel is possible only because it is consciousness. So that's a very nice way of saying that Atma is the, the leader, the one who takes the body from one physical body, or the subtle body from one physical body to another. Therefore, prana shariram. Okay. Why does Atma do that? Because as Atma, as Ishvara, as Paramatma, he is doing his job as Karma Faladatta, as the giver of Karma Palam. And therefore, moving the Jiva from one physical body to another is his job. He is the packer and mover, so to say. And <clears throat> why do we say Jiva? Because this Atma is, though not different from the Jiva, is seemingly limited. Seemingly limited by, because it has got the Koshas. It has got Manomaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha. So with Manomaya Kosha, Upadhi, we call the Atma as the one who thinks. With Vijnanamaya Kosha, or the one who has emotions, with Vijnana Maya Kosha, it is the one who has who is intellectual or also who is a karta. Therefore, this Atma limited by the Upadis. So, not Paramatma, but Vyashti Rupa Atma. The Atma in the, in, in the, in the form of the Jiva. Right? Plus two, two Atmas are there, you can look at that way. Samashti Atma and Vyashti Atma. Now, here we are talking about Vyashti Atma. That role which the Atma is playing because of its Upadis. Right? And then, then the Upanishad says, Pratishta Anne Radaya Sannidhaya. Right? So, explaining. Where is this Atma? Because we are saying Atma is leading the Tukshpa Shariram. So, is there, a, is there a possibility for doubt that it is not there in Stula Shariram? So, the mantra says, no, no, it is very much there in the physical body also. So, anne. So, annam here means food. Food is means annamaya kosha, the physical body. Pratishthitaha annamaya koshe. That is the meaning of the first. Pratishthite anno has to be taken as pratishthito, pratish, pratishthitaha annamaya koshe. It is established, is installed. Pratishthitam literally means installed. So, it is installed in the physical body. So the physical body is the basis for the Atma being there. Hence, he is also there in the physical body. So he is found in the Manomaya, Annamaya Kosha, physical body also. That's what it means, right? So Atma is not there just in Sukshma Shariram. Atma is there as Sat and Chit in both physical, both the physical body and the subtle bodies, but the physical body cannot reflect the consciousness portion. Therefore, when you look at the body of somebody else, for example, you are able to recognize the body, but the consciousness of the other person, you cannot recognize. You, you can, the consciousness principle, I can only recognize in my own mind. So, chat, sit, chit has to be recognized in your own mind Sat can be recognized in your body, chit in your mind, and in other people's bodies, only Sat can be recognized. 
So when you say Atman is there in both the bodies, you have to understand that this same Atma provides both existence, which is Sat, and consciousness, which is Chit, to both the bodies. And where exactly is it located? Hridayam Sannidhaya. Sannidhaya means close to. So Hridayam, the heart is the sanctum inside the body. And why do we say that this Ishvara, which is in the Sukshra Shariram, which is in the mind, can be found in the heart? What is the reason? Why is the heart taken as a locus? It's, it's the Golakam for the Antakaran. It is the Golakam for the mind. Okay, so remember that always. Satabodha said that the Hridayam is the Golakam for the Antakaranam, for the mind. And we say that the body is, the Atma is available in the mind. And the mind is available in its own residence, in its Golakam, which is the heart. And therefore, during Shushupti Avastha, when the mind has been resolved, you will find that there it is there in the heart. And the Paramatma, which is there in the heart, is called Sakshi Chaitanyam. So, Sakshi Chaitanyam is the consciousness principle expressing in the mind, Manomaya. That means Sakshi Chaitanyam is available in the mind as what? As the consciousness principle, as the RC, and therefore it is Jivatma. That Jivatma available in the mind as the witness consciousness, as the Sakshi Chaitanyam, that Jivatma alone is called the Paramatma. And Shankara makes a note over here that this Atma can be installed only in the mind. So he says, Hridaya Avasthana Meva, remaining in the mind alone. So he is saying that direct installation of the Atma is possible only in the Sukshma Sharira. And when you say Atma is there in the Thula Sharira, it has to be understood as indirectly installed. Now, if, if you say that the consciousness principle is directly installed in the physical body, then what is the problem? Anybody? Hello, Why do? Anybody? Yes, please go ahead. By definition, the consciousness principle cannot be installed. It's everywhere. I mean, it's not that it can be put any particular place only. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now uh, it's time to explain another portion. There are two aspects of the consciousness principle. Okay. Like one is the all-pervading consciousness. That all-pervading consciousness does not give you any awareness. That all-pervading consciousness is like, let us say, sunlight. The sunlight does by itself, you will not be able to recognize, excepting when there is a reflecting medium. When the sun hits either the dust particles in the air, that is why you think there is sunlight outside. Right? But if you go into space, you will find that in spite of the sun shining, unless you are actually, actually looking at some object, space is actually dark. So light by itself, you cannot see, excepting when it is, when it is reflected by some medium. Similarly, this consciousness you cannot see unless it is reflected by some medium. So the all-pervading consciousness is of no practical use to you it is the reflected consciousness which makes you aware. That reflection takes place in the mind. So what I am asking is, that reflected consciousness, we say is available in the subtle body. Why can we not say that reflected consciousness is there in the physical body also? And what is the problem if I say that this consciousness is available as a reflection in the physical body also. Okay, Raviji, may I try an answer? Please, please. See, it is the gross body is consumed to flames when you die. 
yeah it is a subtle body that travels correct so you know if you say that the con, uh, the oc is there in the, only in the uh, is there only in the gross body because to be honest what we were taught in tattva bodha oc is there in gross body also correct but if it is located only in gross body then it is not right because the subtle body is also there and that is the one which lasts much longer than the gross body okay fine so that's the answer so basically this consciousness is available in both bodies the only thing is that you cannot say that rc is available in the physical body because the physical body is not a medium which reflects the consciousness physical body reflects existence sat but physical body even though it contains consciousness is not capable of reflecting consciousness reflection of consciousness requires subtle body and that is why when see a person is alive when that person has reflected consciousness you cannot say that a dead body does not have consciousness it has it has it has the all pervading consciousness this that sarvagata chit is very much there in the physical body sarvagata sat is very much there in the physical body but for the body to reflect the reflection of the consciousness in the physical body which means my physical body moves it talks all those things happen simply because the subtle body is there the subtle body is the one which actually reflects the consciousness and this consciousness is borrowed by the physical body from subtle body and that is why when subtle body leaves we call it death and that is why after subtle body is left even though consciousness is available in, in physical body it is not available as reflected consciousness and therefore since prana is not there the physical body starts to deteriorate so when the mind leaves the body <coughs> we say that that is there it requires sufficient mananam because you cannot say that atma is not there in the dead body atma is very much there in the dead body but <clears throat> for the manifestation of consciousness of chit sukshu shariram is required that is why when a person is dead existence is manifest and therefore we can see the dead body but consciousness is not manifest and therefore you cannot say hi to the dead body and expect it to say hi back to you right consciousness is not there the manifesting medium is gone and he says tad vijnanena paripasyanti dhiraha understanding this knowledge so the v prefix vijnanena you can say tad vijnanena also right gnanam is knowledge why does he use v the v represents vishesha gnanam that means vishesha represents teaching born out of shastra acharya upadesha so we saw that in tatvabodha that the teaching has to be through shastra and conveyed by our traditional acharya so that fact that this knowledge is not born out of your own vision is not born out of reading books but has been born out of actually listening some to some traditional teacher that is indicated by vi vijnanena is not born from your personal experience okay and shankara in this uh, commentary writes very clearly that vijnanena means vishishta gnanena vishishta gnanena means shastra acharya upadeshena through the knowledge gained through an acharya that alone is vijnanam right and what exactly is the vijnanam you saying claiming that i am ekatma claiming that i am brahma aham brahma asmi that is the vigyana and the one who is able to understand this knowledge he is free this knowledge is not available for perception by the five sense organs and therefore it is necessary to have a prepared mind to understand this abstract concept and a person who has prepared his mind he is called dhiraha dhiraha the prepared student the one whose mind has been prepared the one who has got sadhana satushtayam paripashyanti he understands this truth he comprehends it effortlessly so pari means everywhere pashyanti means sees paripashyanti sees everywhere sees brahman everywhere 
and what is this dhiraha what is this what are the qualifications required we have done in tatva bodha but in his commentary shankara on on this verse shankara reminds us by saying shama dhamma dhyana so shama we know dhamma we know dhyana is meditation sarvatyagaha means vairagyam so sarvatyaga is there vairagya udbudena that to know readiness to renounce the whole world for the sake of atma gyana shankara takes this as sanyasa shankara takes everything as sanyasa so shama dhamma dhyana sarvatyaga when you say shankara says it means a sanyasi sarvatyaga but as grahasthas we have to give it a more practical view so we say it is uh you know a reduction of things like uh, obligations born out of relationships transactions born out of relationships possessions without relationships or with relationships so for all practical purposes we take it as vana prastha not actually going to a vanam because forests are no longer available but for all practical purposes reducing your uh involvement in household activities right so because as long as you hold on to something and say this is mine so you say this is my wife this is my child this is my grandson as long as that my is there how can you say i am everything you cannot hold on to something individual and at the same time say that i am everything because i am everything aham sarvam it removes mamakara it it destroys individuality and therefore what is the law, what is the result of this effort he says ananda roopam amritam yad vivati so when the mind is happy what happens we know there is happy mind means there is a thought in the mind so we call it shanta vritti or we call it satvika vritti so a quiet mind can reflect ananda and this is pratibhimba ananda what is the lesson from pratibhimba ananda this experienced ananda this reflected ananda it reveals to you that the atman you yourself are basically the original ananda the bimba ananda you of course cannot experience yourself you can only experience reflected ananda because we know that the principle for example fire the heat in the fire cannot be experienced directly you have to have experience it with a with a reflecting medium so if you go next to the fire you will experience the heat how because the fire reflects off your of your body but if you are just looking at the fire from far away that heat can never be experienced you have to have a reflecting medium to experience the heat and similarly to experience ananda you have to have a reflecting medium which is this satvika thought this quiet mind that satvika thought will come and go but the very principle that you are the ananda swarupa the very nature of ananda that is invariable that does not vary at all it is just that that invariable non experienceable ananda it requires some medium an appropriate medium for the manifestation right and the ananda swarupam of the nature of ananda you cannot experience it because you are ananda yourself and the for the original ananda which you are the bimba ananda you can only understand it you can never experience it and the for one understanding from here we take away is that whenever i experience joy or experience ananda remember that it is not any external ananda it is just that that ananda which is your basic nature is being reflected in the mind right because some appropriate thought is there some appropriate vritti is there when the mind gets disturbed again which means when the vritti is gone then this reflection of the ananda in the mind is not formed because of the fact that vritti is no longer there but the original original ananda amritam it is not subject to destruction at all 
not subject to time at all right and yet vibhati it shines and again you look at the word it is vibhati shine means bhati shine is just bhati so why vibhati so shankara comes to our when our help and says vibhati means again visheshena bhati visheshena means sarvada so bhati means shines vibhati means always shines that original ananda is always there whether or not there is a vritti which reflects the original ananda the original ananda is always available there is never a time when you the atma are not available at all at times you will feel the reflection because an appropriate thought is there in your mind and therefore work towards you know a, a form of thought discipline where unnecessary thoughts are not allowed to enter as far as possible tattvika thoughts remain okay now we look at the next mantra the ninth mantra we will chant so you can unmute yourself bhidyate hridaya granti hi bhidyate hridaya granti hi chindyante sarva samshaya ha chindyante sarva samshaya ha शीयंते चास्य कर्माणि शीयंते चास्य कर्माणि तस्मिन् दृष्टे परावरे तस्मिन् दृष्टे परावरे ओके सो दिस नाउ दिस लोका गिव्स यू द फलम ऑफ द ज्ञानम इट इज द palashruti what is the what is the effect of getting that gnanam so the key word here is paravare okay and what is this paravare for that the best definition is shankara he says param is karana atma avaram is karya atma so he says karana atma cha karya atma iti paravare paravare is one word where there is the karanam and the karyam also right so that atma is not only karanam it is also karyam brahman is para because it is the karanam and brahman is also apara because it is the product also so our paramatma is para and if you want to look at the you know divisions really speaking there is no division between paramatma and jivatma by now we are all aware of that but if at all you have to look at a division then this paravare word para refers to paramatma avara refers to jivatma apara is is the jivatma para avara avara is inferior para is superior so here param means karana atma the the cause the creator and our means karya atma the product and what are they both are ekatma and this word paravare is a very important word in shruti and it's taken to mean that there is really no difference between paramatma and jivatma paravare means ekatma right once the fact that the atma is paravare once the fact that paramatma and jivatma are the same the one are one at one ekatma only once this thought is understood therefore he says tasmin drishti tasmin drishte paravare sati having clearly understood that para and anavaram are the same so this drishti here uh, it can be taken as seen literal meaning is seen but here you are to take it as a complete final understanding when it is very clearly seen that atma is both para and avara that atma is whenever you say atma you are including the karanam as well as the karyam 
then then what are the benefits so the benefits are being the phalam the phalam might be outlined over here hridaya grantihi bidyate the first one hridaya grantihi bidyate hridaya heart grantihi is a knot bidyate cut or broken okay now elsewhere we have seen that hridaya grantihi has another name also or that is called avidya granti the knot of ignorance and what does this knot a knot basically ties two two things together right you tie something together and that's why it's a knot so this knot what is it tying to what it is tying you the paramatma to the physical body the three bodies and by tying you to this three bodies you become the jivatma you the infinite paramatma become the jivatma simply because of this knot and what is this knot this knot is called deha abhimanam identification with the bodies so this deha abhimanam is the granti the knot and that consists of what it consists of there is a every knot has you know every string they say has you can make it as three like you can weave the string into three right so this particular string which from which you make the knot this consists of three things avidya ignorance kama desire and karma right so therefore whenever i identify with the body that is the i become the jivatma and that consciousness which is identified with the body is called what go back to the rc rm idea sure. that, that oc which has identified with the rm becomes what hello ravi ji yes sir rc rc right mm. what is another name for rc jivatma jivatma also called ahankara okay remember ahankara has two meanings the dharma shastra ahankara is that uh, you know it's different it is in a negative sense that you have more of a self of self importance than is warranted so that is the dharma shastra ahankara which we call ego in english that is not what is being meant there is a technical meaning of ahankara which is original consciousness identified with the, with the reflecting medium thereby creating the reflected consciousness that is called ahankara in other words the rc in other words as natrogen said the jivatma so when you identify with the body mind complex why do you identify because of ignorance not knowing that you are not the body mind complex not knowing not knowing that you are the paramatma right so that identification causes the jivatma's birth and because you think you are jivatma what happens i am not complete i am not purnam i have a sense of inadequacy and therefore i need to become purnam i need to complete myself there is a desire so avidya the very root which makes me forget that i am paramatma and makes me think that i am jivatma it gives me the sense of inadequacy which i want to dispel and if i am i feel inadequate because i am not complete therefore i need to become complete that is the kama the desire and that kama leads need need leads to karma i have to work to complete my so that is the very root avidya leads to kama kama leads to karma okay so that is the first knot and what happens when i know that i am purnaha when i know that paravara is one and i am that paravara then this knot is broken okay the breaking of this knot this is the first benefit so that is given <coughs> the first two words vidyate hridaya grantihi that is the first benefit the second benefit chindyante sarva samshaya 
Chindyanti resolves. Sarva samshaya. All doubts are resolved. So what are the doubts which you have? Jeeva, Jagat, Ishwara. Right? All doubts about these three are resolved. Now for the Vedic seeker, for the serious student, doubts can be about either the Pramanam itself, either the Shastram itself, or doubts can be about what is uh, told by the Shastra. Right? The Pramanam or the Premayam. Two things are there. Doubts can be about both. So what are the doubts about Pramana, for example? So I might have <clears throat> doubts like, you know, I have uh, five Indriyas and throughout my life, these five uh, Indriyas have been giving me knowledge. And therefore, why do I require a separate Pramana, the Shastram, for knowledge about Atman? What is the answer? The answer is because <clears throat> your Pancha Pramanam cannot give you the knowledge about Atman because they are not available to the Pancha Pramanam at all. Atman is not an object of knowledge. Then Shastra is required. So this can be one doubt. Then you can have another doubt. Will Shastra Pramanam, how will Shastra Pramanam give rise to the knowledge? Because it's not, nothing is available to me, right? I can know color and I can know form because I can see them. I can hear a sound because I can use my ears. And therefore, Shastra Pramanam you use. That tool which you have, your Pramanam which is the eyes you use for knowing color. That Pramanam which is the ears you use for knowing sound. That Pramanam which is the tongue you use, you have to use for knowing taste. And therefore, this Shastra Pramanam, if it has to give rise to Atma Gyanam, you have to use the Shastra Pramanam. You cannot say that, how do I know whether Shastra Pramanam will give rise to knowledge or not? You use it and then see, does it give, to, give rise to knowledge or not? If it doesn't, then it is of no use to you. But one thing is, what is the main difference between Shastra Pramanam and, and uh, other five Pramanams? One of the main differences is that, the other five pramanams, eyes, ears, nose, etc., they are internal to you. You have, you know, you have grown up using that and therefore you trust it. When you, from the very age of, the, you know, few months onwards, you know that whatever your eyes see and your mind understands, that is more or less correct, right? Of course, there are, you can always give examples like a sun rising, it's eyes see, but not really correct. But exceptions. Normally, whatever I see, that I take as true. And therefore, in my five Indriyas, I have complete Shraddha. Because that is the way I have grown up. That is my background. But Shastra is external Pramana. And while I have Shraddha and internal Pramana, because it is how I was brought up, I have grown with that, Shastra is an external Pramana for me. And therefore, you have to have Shraddha in that external Pramana. Until, until that Shraddha is there, that Pramanam is of no use. Okay. Then you might say, all right, what does this uh, Shastra actually say? What is the actual teaching of the Shastra? Does it say, no, as many people say, does it say that Atman is part of Brahman? Because a lot of teachers come out with this theory. That Atman is part of Brahman. Does it say that? Or does it say that Atman is Brahman? Is that is there a difference between Brahman and Atman? Even if Atman is not part of Brahman, is Atman different and Brahman different? There also there is a lot of teachers of confusion. What is Atman and what is Brahman? Then, is the world Satyam or Mithya? These are all questions which you can ask. Does Shastra talk about all this? But what is the essence of Shastra? That is also, it begins to, these are the state problems which are there in my mind. Right? And another thing is that in understanding Shastra, the, even though today, of course, we explain in English, when you, if at all you read the original Shastra in Sanskrit, 
you will know that grammar is extremely important and reasoning that is logic is extremely important why do we say logic because we always say that logic cannot you know prove the existence of brahma right then why do we say that logic is important for shastram because shastram remember the definition of pramanam what one pramanam says should not be capable of being contradicted by another praman okay so a, a shastric statement should not go against any other pramanam like pratyaksham for example by your perception and shastric statement should not go against logic yukti so one of the uh, you know rules we follow is that whenever you find that any statement of shastra contradicts either perception or logic you have to reconcile the normal you know conclusion is what this statement contradicts logic and therefore i reject the statement but that goes against shraddha shraddha means what shastric statement cannot be wrong that is shraddha right and shankara gives an example elsewhere he says even if a hundred shruti statements tell you that fire is cold to touch we should not believe why because anubhava anubhava pramanam experience tells you that fire will burn it is hot to touch and therefore shruti cannot contradict other, other pramanam and that's why we say shraddha is there whenever there is a apparent contradiction you have to have the faith that shruti cannot be wrong and therefore you must look for a resolution through logic through other pramanams to, to and find a way around the apparent contradiction so these are all problems because of which i can have doubts about the praman right so pramana samshaya pramana gata samshaya that is one the second part is what shruti says what is the supposing now i have dismissed the earlier samshaya i am now convinced that whatever shruti says is correct but i know that shruti statement is never wrong when once that is done the earlier samshaya is is been disposed of then i can have another shruti says i am brahman i believe shruti okay when shruti says i am brahman i must be brahman but the problem here is what i don't doubt shruti that i am brahman but you know how can i you know this miserable fellow every morning i get up and i have problems back ache this thing wife shouts at you children shout at you i am so miserable how can i be brahman right is there logic here no it's a feeling that because you have taken for granted you have understood that shastram is correct you have shraddha in the shastram so when shastram tells you that you are brahman you believe it and yet there is this nagging feeling that even though shastram says i am brahman how can i be brahman how can i be brahman is a feeling right it's an emotional state <laughs> that cannot be handled by argument or by reasoning so this particular part is tricky because reasoning cannot handle it and you have to keep on you know looking at the vision of the shastram you have to keep on so we are not saying now this the problem is different right the problem is not that you don't believe shastram you believe shastram but you are unable to accept the conclusion of shastram that you are brahman and that is more common than you think you have for example a complete faith in shastram and shastram tells you that you are brahman but somehow i am not able to own up that which means i still am miserable not because i don't believe i am brahman but i am miserable because of so many problems 
that's an emotional feeling. And what does Shastram tell you? Shastram tells you that you cannot be improved upon at all. Because you are Nitya. You are Brahman. You are Atman. You are the very cause of all creation. In fact, you are all that there is. Both creation and creator are included in you. That vision is something which, which cannot be superseded. It's the most superior vision. It cannot be improved upon at all. And therefore, when I have this feeling that, I, okay, Shruti says I'm Brahman, but how can I be Brahman? There is no logical argument to handle that. All you have to do is keep on looking at Shastram. Keep on seeing the vision which Shastram tells you. Until finally your doubts go away. Okay, so that two basic problems are there. Okay. So that is the destruction of the doubts. Sarva samshayaha. Both Pramana samshayaha and Pramaya samshayaha, they vanish in the wake of the understanding that I am both para and avara. I am both aparam and param both. Then the first, the, the third quarter, chiyante cha asya karmani. All the karman, karmas get destroyed. <coughs> so all the sanchita karmas get destroyed. Which means all the past sanchita karma, plus if you remember tattva bodha, all the present karma up to the time of jnanam, they all get destroyed. What about agami karma? Agami karma can come only if you have deha abhimana. Hence, since the jnani cannot have deha abhimana if he is a jnani, agami karma is also avoided. And therefore, the very important thing here, jnani continues to do karma as loka sangraha, but only drishta phalam remains for those actions because there is no deh abhimanam. There is no intention of any personal benefit behind those actions and therefore adrishta phalam is not generated and therefore agami karma is not there. What remains? Prarabdha karma, also called arabdha karma. In fact, Shankara in his Bhashyam, he never uses the word prarabdha. He always says arabdha. Arabdha simply means that which has begun to give phalam. That is a begun, literally. Begun to do what? Begun to give phalam. Right? Those will continue because until the body is there, the body has to experience the results. Okay. <clears throat> now, one question can come. When I get jnanam, how is it that the body does not go away? A very valid question, right? Because in the other example of snake and rope, what happens the moment I get knowledge of the rope, the snake goes away. Right? The parallel is the same. Both are adhyasa. The snake is an adhyasa on the rope. The body is an adhyasa on me. For that matter, the world, the body and the world is an adhyasa on me. Right? And therefore, if the snake goes away, the moment I get the knowledge of the rope, so what is the parallel here? Body and world are snake. The rope is you. So, in the snake rope example, Raju Sarpa Drishtantaha, when I get correct knowledge of the rope, the snake instantaneously disappears. Right. <laughs> now, the question is, which a Puropakshi asks, the question is, if you are saying that Adhyasa is the same, then when I get knowledge about the Atma, which is compared to the rope, why doesn't the body and the world, why don't they instantaneously disappear? What is the answer? They are two different elements of reality. Yes. Acharya ji, I think the Nyani, uh, 
Niani uh, understands that he's no longer, he's not the body. It's. Uh... Mm, that may be true. But look at the parallel. The moment I know that this is not the rope, I mean, this is not the snake, it's a rope. The snake goes away. The moment I know that this is not the world, why doesn't the world go away or the body go away? Because one is Jiva Srishti, the other is Ishvara Srishti. Excellent. So one is yes. Jiva Srishti, one is Ishvara Srishti. Okay. That's the answer. And Ishvara Srishti will not go away because you didn't create it. The snake goes away because it is Jiva Srishti. You created it and therefore the snake goes. But Ishwara Srishti, you didn't create the world, so the world doesn't go away. So Jiva Srishti has a technical name. It's called Artha Adhyasaha. Superposition of the object. So one object is being mistaken for another object. That is Artha Adhyasaha. Artha Adhyasaha. Jiva's creation. Jiva Srishti. But the body is Ishwara's creation. And this is Jnana Adhyasa, where your perception may be true, but there is an error in understanding. Like you perceive the sun rising, but the understanding is wrong that the sun rises. The sun doesn't really rise. Therefore, by correcting the error in a Jnana Adhyasa, the understanding changes. Perception does not go away. By correcting the error in Artha Adhyasa, Error is corrected. Perception also goes up. Okay, so with this, we'll stop for today. Any questions? I'm open to. Acharya ji, I have a question. Uh, you said there are two kind. There could be two kinds of sanshaya: pramana sanshaya and prameya sanshaya. Yes, yeah, so pramana gata sanshaya. Arising from Pramanam, arising from Prameya. So, uh, can, can we say that Prameya Sanshaya is because of the habitual thinking patterns? Yes, Prameya Sanshaya is because you are not able to accept what Shastram tells you. You don't doubt what Shastram tells you. But the benefits of what Shastram tells you, that is not coming to you. And another question, Acharyaji, from the previous uh, mantra, uh, when when we say that uh, Sat is uh, manifest uh, everywhere and can be uh, can be seen, and a Chit is only reflected through the sukshma sharira, so is I can only know about my mind, and I can only know about myself, and not others. Yeah. How do we explain um, telepathy? Can we explain? No. Telepathy, yes. there are exceptions to every rule. Telepathy means you have, you know, there are some exceptional uh, powers which you have, which Shastra accepts incidentally. Shastra accepts that there are exceptional powers which everybody has. Some are natural, some are gained through spiritual practice. But we say those are not useful for us. We don't say it cannot happen. We say that there are exceptions. Gee, so they, they could be like Siddhis? They could be a Siddhi. I mean, the correct word is Siddhi. Gee, thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then we'll stop for today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamagachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat Om Namah Shivaya Thank you Thank you Thank you